Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to Walking with Disciples. We're in the last chapter of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 28. Um, and Paul, if you've been with us, Paul is on, has been on a journey. He's on via ship at this point to Rome to, uh, to see Caesar, right? He's appealed to Caesar. He wants to be tried by Caesar. He knows that God wants him there. And so yesterday we talked that this huge storm came up. Um, Paul tells them, hey, I told you not to do this, but God is going to save us. Even though you did what you weren't supposed to do, God is still going to save us. And today we pick up um, at, at the end of that story. Uh, and, and one of the things to think about in, um, when you're reading the Bible, a lot of times the chapters sometimes don't make sense. And one of the things we, you, you got to realize, the chapters were put in after it was written, right? Years after it was written, they broke it down. And so uh, sometimes you'll be reading and you'll end a chapter and go, huh, that doesn't make any sense. It's like uh, the story didn't end. And then all of a sudden I turn the next page and it continues. And so this is one of those moments. The end of chapter 27 really should be also with uh, the, ch the beginning of chapter 28. And so um, they've all made it to shore uh, at this point, right? And, and this is where they pick up, Acts chapter 28, verse 1. After we, we were uh, brought safely through, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The native people showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled the fire and welcomed us all because it had begun to rain and was cold. So really interesting here, um, a couple of things. Number one uh, is I, I love that <clears throat> uh, um, uh, Luke, again, right, the writer of, of the book of Acts, um, likes to point things out very specifically. It says, unusual kindness, all right, which means that they were very hospitable. Um, and, and think about it, there's either 276 or 76, we talked about that yesterday, about 276, uh, somewhere in between that, uh, individuals, uh, some in chains, right, prisoners that land on your island, a very, very small island. I think it's like a um, 122 square miles, really small, uh, small island. And all these pe people show up and they, they said they made a fire, right? So that kind of makes you think there's probably about 76 of them, you know, but again, doesn't matter how many, right? Still was a lot of individuals that showed up on a very, very small island and shown kindness. But the other thing is that it was the island of Malta. And I, I wanted to kind of share with you a little bit um, about Paul's journey. I think it'll help. So let me, uh, I'm going to share my screen with you and kind of take you through this as you kind of look at, at the, the, the start, right? So if you remember, um, as we talked through, I know there's been some cities we've talked about and the journey. So Paul starts here in Caesarea, okay? You can see Caesarea, Sidon, right? They come around, remember the Lee of Cyprus, talking about the Lee of Cyprus, Myra, right? Um, and then going through Fairhaven, you know, this is where they're going to go. And then we talked talk about Phoenix as well. Um, but then, but then they, they head off on their journey and this Northeastern comes in and remember for 14 days, well, you can imagine, see how long it would have taken from here to get to Malta, this tiny, tiny little Island nation, um, off the, the, the South of here's kind of Italy, if you, and. Um, Sicily's right here. Uh, this is Italy. And so when you look at this, you recognize that, um, that this was a long way and it's a small little island nation. So I, I point that out because there's a couple of things that are very, very interesting to, to me at least. So if you look up the island of Malta, the Maltese, okay, if you've heard that before, like Maltese Falcon, right? Maltese, it's a, it's a country. Um, it's uh, in, in the European nation, uh, it's currencies, Euro, you know. Um, uh, I, I think it was part of Britain for until 1963, 1974, somewhere in there, right, some history. But the main religion is Catholicism. And in fact, if you go, um, it shows one little island there, but if you actually dial in and, and go there, it's made up of multiple islands, right, some other islands. And the, the island that Paul shipwrecked on is now called Paul's Island, St. Paul's Island. 
right? And then there's even a cave where, where they said he would have hit out, and that's St. Paul's Grotto, right? So um, a lot of history there. <clears throat> but the religion is Catholicism. Think about it just for a half a second, right? How did Catholicism come to this area? <clears throat> and, and, you know, when we talk about Catholicism, we think of the Catholics. But what we have to understand is the early church was Catholic or the right way. Remember the way, right? That was the kind of the name for it. So um, it, it's interesting to me how God can use things to bring his gospel to places, all right? So let's read on the story, but think about, think about what happens in this island nation, right? So, so the, um, they kindled the fire and welcomed us all because it had begun to rain. Verse three, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire. Let me just stop there for a second. Y'all y'all who think you're godly and, and the whole thing, right? Paul's the one who told them, hey, y'all should have listened to me. Now let's, you know, he took leadership role and said, let's sit down, let's pray, let's eat, right? This is what we need to do. He still never got too big for his own britches, right? He still was like, well, I'm going to help, I'm going to help out, right? And so I, I just think, I uh, just, if anyone, any leader out there, anybody out there thinking y'all that in a bag of chips, well, if you're not better than Paul, maybe it's time to pick up a hammer, time to pick up some sticks and help and help out with the fire. But anyways, let me let me keep on with that one. I just love that point. Um, this is when Paul was gathering a bundle of sticks and put them on a fire. A viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. I love that, right? It fastened, like clamped a hold of him. Um, when the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. He's getting justice, right? Uh, though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, <laughs> shook up the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. I love this. And I, I kind of picture myself around the fire with these guys, right? Because it says they were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But the, they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him. They changed their minds and said, that he was a god. I mean, so imagine yourself, you're around, you know, you're around the fire pit and you see someone get bit by a rattlesnake, okay? Not as deadly as a viper, but a rattlesnake, right? And they shake it off and you're all just like, okay, this dude's gone, right? He's dead. And they're just all waiting and just waiting and looking at their watches like, man, how much longer, how much longer? What ends up happening? Paul's like, hey, whatever, ain't, ain't gonna worry. It, and that it, it, it just it, the whole story is very interesting to me because it <clears throat> it leads us to the the next story, right? And here's what here's what I mean by that: we have a shipwreck, right? And and the people on the boat with Paul understand now that Paul's God is powerful. Okay, we don't know if anyone was converted from that at all, right? But we understand that now the, the, the individuals on the island wouldn't have known anything. And Paul could have stayed there um, and they would have really never known him. But God's like, okay, I'm bringing the shipwreck. The shipwreck's going to happen to get you to this island. But I'm sorry, Paul, I'm going to have to do something else to you. I'm going to have to have a snake bite you. You may be thinking, what, Pastor James, are you saying that God caused the snake to bite him? I, I think he did. I, th I think that God, it says in, in the word of God, that God uses all things, right? Uses all things for the good for those who love him or call him according to his plan and purpose, right? And so God, I believe, used this snake bite, this moment to show the people of the, the, the Maltese, right? The uh, Malta Island to show them this was not an ordinary man. There's something about him. It goes on, verse 7, and, and again, I believe it kind of builds here because it says, goes on now in the neighborhood, um, you know, it's an island, right? There was a place where, oh, um, and it belonged to the chief man of the island. Now, this island was, was very prominent, and it was used uh, all the way into World War II um, as, a, as a place 
to um, uh, have naval uh, naval vessels and right you can kind of see remember if you if you kind of remember the map there you could see how important it could be because just below that is North Africa right and so um, they there was this man there and he received them and he said um, you know hospitality for three days it happened at that this man's father right the the chief of this area the leader of this area was was sick with dysentery right and fever and Paul visited him prayed for him um, and he was healed and then and this is then the rest of the island also anyone who had disease came and also were cured, and, and they also honored us greatly. And when we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. So they re resupplied them and resupplied them, right, with every everything they needed, the, the ship and the whole thing. Now, so what does this tell us, right? This tells us that God can truly use anything. And it wasn't the shipwreck that brought the gospel of of Jesus Christ to this small little island nation that is now can, still a, a Catholic, a predominantly Catholic um, nation, right? It wasn't the shipwreck. It was Paul's getting bit by a viper, which allowed him then to be able to, to, to show that the people that he was something greater than just a criminal, right? And so, when we, when we talk about Paul and we talk about our lives itself, there are times in our lives things are going to happen and people are going to sit back and they're going to wait for us to swell up and die, right? They're going to sit around the fire with us and they're just going to wait there. It's interesting to me that Luke doesn't say that anybody ran to him, right? Luke's a physician. Luke didn't run to him and say, hey, I'm going to fix this, right? Or none of, none of the... the, the um, the natives of the Malta Island, none of them ran to him and said, hey, you know, this is how we, we you know, fix this. Right? Other people get bit by a viper and this is how we're going we're gonna to suck the poison out. We're going to do whatever. Right? No, he sat around and watched them. And can I tell you, there are people that are going to sit around and watch us. Right? They're going to wait for us to die because they're going to think there's something evil. Oh, look at what happened. Look at this. Look at that. Look at how evil they are. They're getting it. And they're going to sit around, they're going to wait for us to swell up and die, and we're not going to. And it's going to be in that opportunity when we can either make the decision to, to uh, be upset with them and like, oh, I ain't going to help you out. I ain't going to do anything. You waited for me to die. And Paul could have done that. and said, I ain't going to heal any of you guys. I'm not praying for you. You all waited for me to die. You thought I was going to swell up and die. Or we can be on the opposite side and say, hey, Hey, that same God who protected me is the same God that's going to protect you. So love you guys. Monday, we're going to pick up. A Paul is going to arrive in Rome. We're almost done, believe it or not, with the book of Acts.